Okay, next up, today we are going to be experimenting and hooking up this RGB LED. And basically, you have, it's similar to an LED, you've got anode and cathode, but there's actually three different anodes, each one with a different color. And then there, you see that longest leg? That's the cathode. They all share the same cathode. So you can get different colors by applying different amounts of voltage to each one of the anodes, somewhere between zero and 255 using pulse width modulation, which that's a lot, <laughs> but just stick with us. We'll, uh, we'll figure this out. First of all, we need an Uno. We need a breadboard. We need four jumper wires. We've got plenty of those. And we need an RGB LED. And then we've got our three 220 ohm resistors right here. Then this is the photo from the documentation on the PDF. Really good documentation, by the way, so far. Um, and it shows the blue, green, red, and then there's the common cathode. And this section basically talks about how you can mix the three colors to fool the eye into thinking it's seeing one color. So you have a, a wide palette to choose from with that kind of mix. Uh, zero to 255 on each one. This goes into pulse width modulation, which uh, read up more on it. I like read this, but uh, basically it uses the time that each that the signal is high to simulate an analog signal. So this this is like I don't know five yeah five percent five percent duty cycle is what they call it, which means you should get about five percent brightness. Uh, this is 50% duty cycle. This happens very fast, one five hundredth of a second. <laughs> so the eyeball can't actually see it flickering on and off, but that's what's happening. It's going on for one twentieth of a duty cycle, and then it's turning off for the rest, and then going on. All your eyeball is going to see is a dimmer or brighter LED in this case, and that's how you can control the colors. Uh, PWM is going to come up in some other topics too. Roughly every five, one five hundredth of a second, PWM output will produce a pulse. And that's using the analog write function. So uh, here's a schematic. And you can see we, we're going to have three PWM outputs going to the RG and B of the RGB LED. And then, of course, the common cathode is just going to be tied to ground there. So we need three pins. Here we're going to be using D3, 5, and 6. Looks like three going to blue, five going to green, six going to red. Okay, here's a diagram, uh, the wiring diagram from the PDF. And you can see we have ground. This is that long leg we were looking at right here. And we have that going to ground. And then you have um, six, five, and three being used. Why did they skip four? Well, See all the little tilde symbols in front of the numbers? The ones that have tilde symbols have PWM. If you look at the board, it actually says it right there. PWM tilde signal symbol. So that's why you have to skip four because it's not a PWM pen. So, uh, yeah, they use jumper wires there. And I took the lazy way out and I connected the resistors directly to the Arduino or the Elegoo Uno and uh, took those straight over to the uh, to the breadboard. And you can see that second leg is hooked up. The common cathode is hooked up to ground right there. Um, and it's still running the old, uh, old blink routine. Real slow blink. I think I said it at like three seconds last time. So we need to get the code up and running. But I think we're hooked up good. So according to the PDF, there should be code in the PDF file and then a lesson for RGB LED. And I'm looking for uh, that sketch called the same thing. So let's see if I can find it. I have, this is on the PC now, code directory, uh, lesson four. Here we go, RGB LED. And then there is the sketch. When I double click it, it hopefully will just pull it up in Arduino IDE, and it is. It's loading now. Perfect. All right, let's take a quick look at this code. 
defining pins. Now these are just defining like constants up here at the top, blue, green, and red. That's blue is pin three, green is pin five, red is pin six. Setting those pins all to outputs and digital right red high, digital right green low, digital right blue low. Okay, so in that case, it should just be red. Define variables, red value, green value, blue value. Fading time between colors. Uh, okay, here we go. And then it has this for loop. Red value minus one, green value plus one. The following was reverse counting in the wrong directions. Uh, Analog right, red value, green value, and they're not even writing the blue, oh, blue value zero. Okay, here we go. Now they're messing with the blue value. All right, cool. Okay, so that's it. That's the code. We should be ready to just upload it. Hopefully it compiles with no problems. It should. Very basic code. And then hopefully it should work. All right, it just uploaded and the code is running. And it is going through, it's cycling. I don't know if you guys can see it or not. It's going green, blue, purplish, reddish, yellow, green. It's not really picking up that well on the phone, but it is cycling through colors as you could probably tell. So there we go, that's the basic function of an RGB LED works fine. It, it's actually, like I said, the documentation is really good here. And uh, yeah, we could play around with this code, but let's move on to the next lesson.